U.S. history teacher, one of the founders of NukeFree.org, and a tireless speaker on the dangers of nuclear power, please welcome Harvey Wasserman. Thank you. Thank you, Peace Walkers. I bring you two pieces of good news. First of all, my daughter Abby is here with her husband to be. They're going to be married in two weeks. And I'm here to protect their children, my grandchildren, and they're here too. That's Abby and Aki. Thank you very much for welcoming them and giving them a big send off. The other piece of good news. And I, ha I know you haven't heard this for 40 years. We are winning. We are about to win. India Point is about to shut down. We have a huge, and I, I say this as someone who's been fighting this technology since 1973, we are about to win definitively for a couple of reasons. First of all, after all these years, wind, solar, tidal, geothermal, ocean thermal, the thing I call solar topian energy, is now cheaper than nuclear power can ever hope to be. There will never be another nuclear plant built in this country, and we are going to shut down all these nukes, starting probably with Vermont Yankee within a couple weeks. Many of you have been following Vermont Yankee. There is a contractual agreement between Entergy and the, uh, the, the state of Vermont. It's going to court. I think we'll win. I think Vermont Yankee will be shut within a very short period of time. It is a huge deal. Immediately after Indian Point, after, immediately after Vermont Yankee will come Indian Point. We are very, very close. And when we shut these reactors, all the other ones are going to follow. Europe and the United States are at the brink of the end of the atomic age, of the atomic mistake. The peaceful atom is the most expensive technological failure in human history. And you here, you know, have been watching a hell of a long time, but we are really on the brink of shutting these reactors. Now is the time, if you've been working, Double it, triple it, quadruple it, because this is the time where we can win. We have the state government on our side. We have the law on our side. Rancho Seco is shut. We have we have numerous reactors around the country. We are shut. We've had a period where we haven't shut any, but now we break the dam. Once we start shutting these reactors, once Vermont Yankee goes down, once Indian Point goes down, Davis Bessie will go down, Crystal River will go down, Oyster Creek will go down, San Onofre will not reopen. We have the power now. We have never been closer because renewables have come. There is absolutely no economic justification for building a new nuclear plant or for continuing to operate these reactors. We finally, you know, what's good for the environment is ultimately good for the economy. Shutting Indian Point will be a great economic boon to the state of New York. We can make that case. We know about the dangers. We know this is a Fukushima clone. We know that it's a year and the, the accident at Fukushima is still going on. They still don't have that place under control. They will never get it under control. And the same would happen here. We know all that. But we now have time on our side after 40 years with great people like Connie and so many others. We are winning. Please stick with it. Now, I'm going to have a radio show at 2 o'clock on Tuesday on, on Gary's Network. Uh, I want to invite people to come and talk and call in to the ra ProgressiveRadioNetwork.com at 2 o'clock on Tuesday. I'm going to have some people from here. But the bottom line is this. The economy is on our side now. We understand that the politicians, some of them, the key ones, are on our side now. This plant is doomed to a very quick shutdown if we keep on it. We've never been able to say that before. We are probably within months of shutting down this plant if we keep the focus going on it. So now more than ever, please, join us in. It's going to be so gratifying and so much fun. And we are about to enter the age of solar copium. And you are the reason why. Thank you very much. And no need.
We're going to move into the digital part of today's events. I'm going to bring up uh, Dar Williams, singer, songwriter, and now one of the leaders in the effort to close down Indian Point. She's going to talk to us about the cranes. And here is a bag of cranes made by the students at my school in support of your effort, and our effort. Hey. Mark, that's very helpful. I think we're going to... Uh, this is actually uh, one of our peace walkers, Roberto Mueller, is here, and I wanted him to read the statement of no, how... I'm right here. Oh, good. Come, come. Okay. Come with... Yeah, grab right, that piece of paper. Yeah. We're clearing a space over here with a blanket for offerings and also a place to hang a string of cranes if you made a string of cranes. And I think this is just a, a, a quiet time to either grab a, a crane that you made or that maybe somebody else made that you want to put up on the blanket or, or stand back and um, it's, it's a thoughtful time. But I'm going to let Roberto, it's going to be over in this corner behind me uh, across the street from the entrance gate. It's a, it's, um, and as uh, Christian was saying, um, it's, it's an offering uh, in the direction of Indian Point for all sorts of things. But this was, Roberto's going to read the statement of how, what we were thinking of when we made what we hoped will be a thousand cranes. Roberto Mueller, here. A thousand cranes at Indian Point. We asked everyone to make one thousand origami cranes to string together at this site. In Japanese lore, if you made a thousand cranes, you would be granted a wish, which was traditionally seen oh, by a crane, which was traditionally seen as a magical creature. Often, this wish was for long life and recovery from illness. In the modern age, the Japanese also associate 1,000 cranes with the recovery from radiation poisoning at Hiroshima and Nagasaki. The thousand cranes we make for March 11th represent our best wishes for the recovery of Fukushima, its adults and children, its lands and seas, and for all of Japan. Furthermore, we wish for the future health of our communities, of our children who along with children all over the planet will inherit our nuclear legacy. We look forward to working together for a safer and healthier world. Thank you. for all of us to make these cranes. And if we can open up the space right here, right in front of me, if you can part, if we can sort of part, part the seas to, to make space so that we see, go over to the side a little bit and maybe even line up to, to um, if everybody can kind of go, where, where I'm standing I believe is where they're going to screw the, the, the blanket. So if everybody can kind of fan off to the side this way and this way, screw that blanket. stand against it. It does no good for us to be aware of Indian Point and then go eat a McDonald's and drink a Coca-Cola and buy clothes made in Bangladesh at slave labor at 14 cents an hour or to use American Express or their credit cards to buy things that we don't need and pay for money that we don't have. And then to go shop at Walmart where your jobs at one time used to be and they were outsourced. Or if you're highly educated and very skilled, now insourcing 8.2 million jobs from India to take the place of you at half the price. So a consciousness raising here today, I hope 
is a conscious reasoning about everything in life. But never expect the New York Times or Fox or anyone else to tell you the real truth. Go to the alternative sources of information. The internet they do not yet own. The internet is the power to educate us. It is the power to free us from that dominant single source of truth. All right? So I thank you all for coming. We look forward to having all the speakers. And I just want you to know that for all of you in my audience, I appreciate you taking the time to be here. For those of you who are not in the audience, tune in to Progressive Radio Network because we have Harvey Wasserman. We have dozens of the best minds in America who won't fit anywhere else on the left or right because they're not willing to compromise on truth any longer. So we're not limited in our choices. Thank you all. Gary Shaw. Um, we have a very special guest uh, from Japan and Professor Akira Murakami uh, of Akira University in Tohoku region of Japan is going to introduce our special guest. This is Sabro. Uh, uh, <laughs> this is Sabro from Fukushima nuclear power plant. So uh, I am a worker uh, in it. So uh, hello and good afternoon, every uh, sisters and brothers. So uh, Watashi wa ichimen 東京にいて強い揺れを感じました。テレビや爆発のニュースを伝えていました。放射線を押し、え、怖がった人々は家に閉じこもっていました。私は25年前から人権活動や様々な市民運動に関わっていました。大変な状況で。情報は限られていました友人と私はこの大変な状況を何とかしなければならないと思い一週間後に東京電力の本社の前で抗議行動を始めました最初はたったの3人でしたしかし30分1時間2時間そのような時間が経つうちに ユーストリームの中継を見ていた人々がどんどん集まってきて最終的には30人ぐらいの人々がその行動にどんどん参加してきてくれました One year ago, I was in Tokyo with my wife We felt the success of the big shakes 
television was carrying the news about an explosion. There was nobody in the streets, people were afraid of radiation. I have worked as a human rights activist for 25 years. Uh, it was a very stressful situation. I knew that we were not getting full information. My friends and I decided that something had to be done. One week later, I organized a demonstration at TEPCO, uh, the company that runs the nuclear power plant. There were only three of us at first. People heard about us on YouTube and joined us on the same day. There were 30 of us at the end of the day. One month later, this grew into uh, 20,000 people and it continues to grow. Give him another quick round of applause. And really get the and, uh, I'm going to start out my comments, and I'm going to be brief because we have a lot of other talented people to speak about this issue. But um, you know, Gary raises a good point about where we get our information. Um, I, I absolutely support what he says about going to Progressive Radio Network, uh, looking at independent sources of media. And I also want to give a plug to uh, going to look at the Indian Point Safe Energy Coalition website going to Clearwater's website, um, going to Riverkeepers. It's a shameless plug, but you know we have a lot of good information on our websites that we've developed. We have experts working for us that, that can really help us inform this issue. And I encourage you all to take a look at that. And how do I get in touch? Just a moment. Let's be together. Okay. Let's be together. Let's be together. Let's be together. Let's be together. Let's and this terrible tragedy that happened a year ago. And it should never have happened. We're not talking about a hurricane. Here we're not talking about a, a, you know, something that, that could not have been prevented. Fukushima in Japan, they knew that they were, could have a worst case scenario earthquake and a worst case scenario tsunami, and they did not prepare for it. And I think when you look at a tragedy like this, and I know, you know, to make it personal for a moment, if you look at your own lives and you have something terrible happen, I think it's human nature to reflect on that and to think, you know, what can I learn from this? What lesson can I take away from this so something like this doesn't happen again? I can be prepared for it. And so when you think about the lessons of Fukushima and what we should take away from this after a year, and you look at what we're faced with here in our backyard with Indian Point, I think the lesson is clear. And the main point here is, if anyone tells you that a Fukushima-type accident cannot happen here, they're either uninformed or they're not telling you the truth because you can have a nuclear accident here and you can have an accident that leads to a terrible meltdown and a release of radiation. And for that reason alone we need to shut Indian Point and Riverkeeper has been working for many many years to do just that and we're in the final stages of uh, getting ready for a federal hearing on the plants relicensing that will um, that, I, that we're confident that we can, we can at the least slow this process down and at best, I think with New York State behind us, we can we can shut this plant down.
three main reasons to close down Indian Point. One is that you may remember that if the planes that hit the World Trade Center had gone down 60 minutes, uh, 60 seconds sooner, they could have displaced all of the water in the fuel pools of Indian Point causing a meltdown. That didn't happen, but it could happen. Nothing has happened in the last 10 years to strengthen or fortify those unprotected fuel pools. The other is that Indian to be closed. For all the problems that are the shopping list, they've increased every year. Every year there have been more problems, more unresolvable issues at Indian Point, and it makes it even more urgent that the plants be closed. Over the years there have been the high points. The high points being unfortunately bad occasions. The high point in organizing was Three Mile Island. Three Mile Island precipitated that incredibly large demonstration that Westpac uh, organized in Peekskill, hundreds, thousands of people, and then a couple of hundred of us who came up to the plant gate, and you could get right up to the plant gate at that point, and we had a die-in. We trained people for weeks and weeks and weeks to die in and represent those people who were killed, and we knew they were killed at Three Mile Island and a lot of us were arrested. We were, in the, we were in the slammer for almost two weeks. And in the slammer, we were making paper cranes. And the guards, the women guards, brought us newspaper so that we were able to make a thousand cranes. So um, that is the kind of energy that has sustained us over the years. Please give a warm welcome to our Peace Walkers. They're joining us. a minute as the Peace Walkers come and join our group and then we're going to continue um, with the program. We just have a few more speakers.